Father, we thank you for this morning. We we'll lift your name on high. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, as we go into your word, go with us. Father, speak to us. Let none of us live here the way we came. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We love you, Lord. For we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, technical, please, this mic doesn't look, it looks sick, so please do something. Genesis 22, I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 14. Genesis 22, from verse 1 to verse 14. Genesis 22, verses 1 to 14. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sorry, Matthew, not Genesis. Matthew 22 from verse 1 to verse 14. Not Genesis. Matthew 22. And Jesus answered and spoke unto them, saying, Again, I mean, spoke unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidding to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidding, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Verse 8. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bathing were not worthy. Take note of that, verse 8. Go ye therefore into the highways. And as many as you shall find beat to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having the wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away. Cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. And so my first question for you this morning is, Are you among the chosen few? Please ask your neighbor, are you among the chosen few? The title of my message this morning is, Are You Worthy? What did I say? It's a question. It's a question. In verse 8 of the passage that we read, the Bible says, Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready. But they which were bidding were what? They were not worthy. The wedding was set. Everything was prepared for them. But the people that were invited, they were what? They were not worthy. They were not worthy. Even when the the doors were thrown open, and the Bible clearly says they went to the roads and they invited as many as they could see on the roads, both what? Good and bad. Did you see that in your Bible? The door was open to both the good and the bad. Yet, somebody was thrown out. Are we together? The door was open to the good and the bad. Yet, amongst either someone that called himself good or someone that was obviously bad, one person was still found wanting and was thrown out. Can you ask your neighbor one more time? Are you worthy? That's a very important question for us to ask ourselves today. Two men of God, we are sharing their testimonies. 
they both had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the end of their encounter, one declared boldly. I mean, he saw, in his, in his own encounter, he saw, uh, 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 it's like men on one side, heaven on the other side, and Jesus was on the other side. And there was a wide gulf in between. In that wide gulf, there was fire. The fire was burning. So when they call your name, you come forth, you begin to walk on a narrow bridge between where the men were and where Jesus was. And Jesus will begin to talk about you. Begin to talk about you. And as he talks about you, you don't walk on the bridge. The bridge carries you. The bridge is carrying you to where Jesus is. But if he finishes talking about you before the bridge gets to where he is, what happens? The person will fall into the fire. So this man of God who got the revelation, he said that about a thousand men were called before him, out of which only two were found worthy. How many? So when it was his own time, they called his name, he stepped on the bridge, Jesus started speaking, and he was being moving close as it was about a step for him to get to where Jesus was, Jesus stopped speaking. So what happened to him? He fell. As he was going into the fire, he, he woke up. And now he, 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 went, he now went into a conversation with Jesus. And Jesus made him to realize that, look, you are doing a good job, but the work you are doing is not what I have sent you to do. And if you die today, you are not coming to meet me. And so this man with zeal now began to, I mean, he knew where he had gone astray. He knew where he was running a ministry to be like others. He knew where he wanted to please men rather than please God. He knew when he began to run a rat race. And brethren, when you, know that, when you run a rat race, what are you? You are a rat. Can you ask your neighbor, are you a rat? When you begin to compete with others on an assignment that God has not given unto you, you are running a rat race. And so he began to preach the gospel of the kingdom with a new zeal. And his, his colleague now began to share his own experience. But the long and short of it is the fact that the first man said less than 2%, of course, 2 out of 1,000. Is that 2%? Please tell me, what percentage is that? 2 out of 1,000. And the man said, no, there are so many churches. Is that not so? There are so many churches. How can just less than 2% less than be among those that will make it to heaven? Brethren, if Christ comes as we are seated here today, how many of us think we are going to go with him? Yeah, I can see that many of us think we are not going. <laughs> That's very important. But do you know that of a truth, if Christ comes as we are seated here, many will be watching and will be telling the story. Oh, I was there. Oh, I saw it. Oh, that pastor just disappeared. Because me, I will disappear. I will go. The microphone just fell. That thing he put on his head. And so that old-fashioned pastor, he has refused to be modern. People don't use this again. But the thing did what? It fell. And the man disappeared. Are you going to be the one telling the story? Will I look around in heaven and be looking for members of Christ's chapel and I will not find you? Or will I find you? Like I always tell our people, don't make me a lonely man in heaven. Tell your neighbor, don't make me a lonely man in heaven. That presupposes that you will make it to heaven. Because many of us are running our race as if there is no heaven. Many of us are running our Christian race as if, some will even tell you that heaven is here on earth. And some men, when they have problems with their wives, they will say there is no hell, that hell is in their home. That is deception. Self-deception. If you get to hell for one minute, you will not toy with hell. You will not toy with hell. This man, in the passage that we read, a, I mean, a supper was prepared. A marriage was prepared for his son. 
And one of the things we know as children of God is that there is something the Bible calls the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's what you are being prepared for. That's what I am being prepared for. We are being prepared for the marriage supper of the Lamb. But we must live a life conscious of where we are going. If I were to ask you today, where are you going? Many of us suspended our lives until, until we made it to Canada. Is that not so? Some people, for the past 10 years of their lives, if you ask them, oh, they went through the desert of the Niger Republic. From there they got to, I mean, what do they call that place? Algeria. From there to Libya. And they were in a vehicle where there were 10 people in the vehicle, 8 people died. And they saw it. And so they got to Europe. And when they got to Europe, they realized that this is not where I want to be. They found their ways to where? South America. And they found their ways across the border in Mexico to the U.S. And somehow, somehow, they found their ways to where? Canada. All through those times, life was suspended. True or false? Yes, sir. You, you, all, I just, you just want to get somewhere. Now you are in Canada. And like somebody said, you find that Canada is not some people are not sure. Is Canada heaven? No. You found that Canada is not heaven. You found that for the 10 years that you've been, on, you've been running, some people that were far behind you have caught up with you and have done what? Have gone ahead of you. That was a race we are running to a man-made place. A man-made place that has destroyed the future of many. How much more a race for eternity? Because brethren, whatever you see in this place, oh, when I was, at the time I came to Canada, around the year 2000, I came here in 2000. Around that time, they used to have this survey, I see they still have it, that they said Canada was the best place to live in the world. Have you heard of that, that thing before? I don't know how they rank Canada today. I don't think they say we are the best again. But maybe still among the best. At that time, they said it was, a, it was the best place to be on earth. But you know your experience. I know my experience. No matter how good Canada is, brethren, it's nothing compared to heaven. Tell somebody, make sure you don't miss heaven. It's very important. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 19. Verse 6 to 9. Revelation 19, 6 to 9. He said, I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. The voice of, as the voice of many waters. As the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready. Are you ready? Please ask your neighbor, are you ready? Because we are the bride of the Lamb. He said, the wife had made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is what? The righteousness of the saints. So you know one thing that can make you not to be ready is what? Unrighteousness. So when I ask you, are you ready? I'm simply asking you, are you righteous? And asking you, are, are you righteous? It's not a matter of saying, oh, and uh, some people will tell you, no man can know if he will make heaven. That's a lie. You know if you will make heaven or not. You know the race you are running. You know where righteousness stands in your um, in your day-to-day -day living. Some of us are masters of compromise. True or false? You know what the Bible says? Because you are neither hot nor cold, I will do what? I will spill you out of my mouth. I don't know you. You are known for compromise. You are known for mixing black and white. You are not known to be a child of God. Many of us will do all it takes that men may not count us as Christians. True or false? That's the truth. You want to belong. Do you realize, brethren, that in hell, nobody has time for the other person? Are we together? It's a place of torment. 
All those people you want to belong to, they will be there, but you won't have time for them. Neither will they have time for you. The rich man said unto Abraham, he said, Father Abraham, I'm in torment. Let Lazarus give me what? A drop of water. Brethren, between where Abraham was and where the rich man was, that drop of water, will it survive? It will not. But he was in such torment that he thought a drop of water could even survive and get to where he was. Oh, but Abraham said, you have enjoyed while you were on earth. And Lazarus suffered. Now Lazarus is enjoying and you are what? Suffering. That will not be your portion. Amen. That's why you are in the house today, brethren. There is a place called heaven. And there is a place called hell. Blessed are they which are called to the marriage of the Lamb. In the passage that we read, the invitation went out. But those that were invited began to excuse themselves. They excused themselves away. The first thing they did was that they ignored the invitation and would not just come. Maybe you are here today and you have been in, ignoring that invitation. Oh, don't mind those, uh, uh, um, what do they call them now? Fanatics. I want to assure you, brethren, only fanatics will make heaven. Oh, yes, sir. What did I just say? Oh, when we are told that less than point something percent of the people made it, you think there are people that have Christianity of, uh, 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 I mean, we see what she Christianity? Like I always ask us, brethren, you know of a man called Paul, right? How many of us have heard of Paul? Okay, maybe Paul is not popular. How many of us have heard of Peter? You've heard of Peter. They are, I mean, the disciple of uh, Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the Paul in the Bible. Oh. Now, is it the same heaven Paul went to that you are going? Can you ask your neighbor? Is it the same heaven that Paul went to? Is that where you are going? And you think God is so partial that he dealt with Paul anyhow. And he will not be pampering you and say, don't worry my son, don't worry my daughter, just come and enjoy it. Did Paul suffer for you? Did Paul, uh, answer, did Paul suffer for you? Jesus died for Paul. And he died for you. Paul had to bear his own cross to make sure he did not miss heaven. How are you bearing your own cross? How are you bearing your own cross? Uh, I know this is not the message some of us expected to hear in the house today. But that's the message God asked me to give to you. Are you worthy? Are you worthy? Look at their response. They made light of the invitation. Many of us will come to church if we say there's opportunity for entertainment. And when I say entertainment, I'm not just talking of, uh, of food. I know Nigerian jollof is good. Is that not so? So if we declare that next Sunday there is what? Nigerian jollof. Some people will come to church because of that. I'm talking from experience. <laughs> but some of us, if we were to say any of these worldly entertainers, he will come to church next Sunday because you want to meet with him. You want to take a picture with him. You will do what? You will come. The Bible says they made light of the invitation. That's what many of us are doing in Christianity today. We are making light of the invitation. We are trivializing the things of heaven. Heaven is no longer the end goal. Our Christianity is Christianity that will enrich us. Is that not so? The Bible says, seek ye for the kingdom of God. And every other thing shall be added unto you. And we ignore the first part. And we take the second part as this word, every other thing shall be added. The Bible says, my God shall do what? Supply all your needs. According to what? By Christ Jesus. That tells you one thing. Without Jesus, there is no supply. True or false? The measure of the supply he will give to you is his glory. Not your own measurement. Not your measurement. They've made light of the invitation. That was one group. 
What was the other group? The other group went to their farm. The farm signifies what I call the productive enterprise. Oh, you have a factory. You have an, I mean, an industry, whatever it is. A productive one. It's functional. It's doing well. Many will be very successful on earth, but will not make it to heaven. I pray that's not your portion. Amen. What did the third group do? They went to the market to trade in goods, merchandise. Do you realize that the goods they were trading in includes human beings? Are we together, brethren? That's what the devil does. The devil trades in the souls of men. And the devil can only trade in your own soul if you allow him to. If you yield your soul unto him. If you give it unto him. He will exchange it. He will trade with it. The choice is yours. What choices are you making today? When you ignore or neglect the invitation of the king of kings, you open the door to servitude to the world. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. It said that you serve God or you serve the living God or you serve the things he has made. Amen? Amen. You either serve God the creator or you serve every other thing which are what? The creatures. Do you know the devil was created? Is that not so? Those are the two alternatives. What's your choice? What is your choice? When the king saw their response, he said, those that were invited were not worthy. Remember what? That's why we started. Are you worthy? Some people will go to church all their lives and still go to hell. All their lives they go to church, but they will still go to hell. Is that your Lord? Some people will not even step into the church at all. But just before they die, they do what? They give their lives to Christ. That's why the Bible says, He sent His servants. They invited both what? The good and the bad. For both the good and the bad, the criteria for making heaven, the criteria for entering heaven is the same. Except a man be born again, he cannot. Enter into the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom. Both the good and the bad, the criteria for entering heaven is who? Is who? It's Jesus. It's only Jesus that will take you to heaven. That's why, brethren, none will make it without the wedding garment. What is the wedding garment? Righteousness. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. But what? Sin is a reproach. That's what is sin is a reproach. Now, that passage does not tell us the type of sin. It just says what? Sin is a reproach. In other words, brethren, sin will debar you from getting to where you want to go. And we all know it. We all know it. The good and the bad we are invited. Haven't you heard of ladies that have kept themselves pure? Just ladies. One day they made a mistake. Became pregnant. Decided to commit an abortion. And what happened? The lady, she dies. Where is she going? It doesn't matter what the theory of men is. Oh, you go to the other side. You see some ladies, they, growing up, they made up their mind that they are for the devil. They can tell you they have committed seven abortions. And then they get married. And they still have many children. Is that not so? And you know the worst part of it? They will give their lives to Christ. And what happened? They will make heaven. That's why you don't run your race with another man's clock. 
The Bible says, looking unto who? Look unto Jesus and Jesus alone. The way he deals with you is not necessarily the way he will do what? Deal with me. The Bible says our God is in the heavens. He doeth whatsoever pleases him. Or he will give some men a thousand chances. He will give some men. How many? One. 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 The end result is the same. If you take the chance he has given you, heaven is assured. If you reject the chance he has given you, hell is assured. What's your choice? Are you worthy? Are you worthy? Are you worthy? None will make it without the wedding garment. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. It says, Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are what? So only those that have not defiled their garments are worthy. What is the testimony of that church in Sardis? The church in Sardis. That's same Revelation chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3. Revelation 3, 1 to 3. He said, Unto the church, angel of the church in Sardis, right? This thing said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He said, I know thy works. Tell somebody he knows your work. He said, Thou hast a name that thou livest and at what? Ah. This was a church that they say was a living God. You know what they call living, I mean, living church. You know what they call living church these days? Oh, their praise and worship is wonderful. Oh, when they, uh, I mean, when they pray, uh, even angels will bow. They have, I mean, before men, they are alive. But God said, I looked at them. They are what? They are dead. You know what the Bible calls, uh, uh, what, what is it? What? It says whitewashed tombs. You know what that means? When you look at the tomb on the surface, beautiful. He said, but inside the tomb, what do we have? Dry bones, no flesh, no life. What are you? If God, if Jesus were to come to you today, what will he say unto you? Will he say that you have this ear, ear as in A-I-R, of being alive, being fervent, being everything God wants you to be, but within you, you are what? You are dead. Is that your testimony? That's why we're here today. So that if that is what he will see of us, we can make amen. He said, be watchful. Strengthen the things which remain. Because, brother, for every one of us, no matter how far we have gone, something remains. Tell somebody something remains. Something. Remember that, that woman, that, that uh, widow that came to Elisha and said, my husband is dead. He was one of the sons of the prophets. And he left death for us. And they've come to take my, my sons. Elisha said, what do you have at all? What did she say? She first said nothing. She now said, but what? A bottle of oil. So, tell somebody you have something. No matter how small, you have something. It says, strengthen the things which remain because they are what? They are ready to die. Don't allow them to die. He said, for I have not found that work perfect before God. That is all that matters. It doesn't matter the testimony you have before me. It doesn't matter the testimony you have before the general of us here. Brethren, we know. There are many men that surround the geo that are full of deceit. So it doesn't matter. The testimony that matters is the one you have before who? Before God. He said, remember how you have received and had. Hold fast and repent. That's all the hold fast. Hold fast. And repent. And repent. He said, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Do you know what, brethren? The Bible tells us that it's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. Ephesians 5.27 
Our general oversight gave us an analogy. When the Bible says it's coming for a church without spot and wrinkle, it said you have a container full of clean water. I believe the cleanest water that we drink, maybe distilled water. You have a, a, a container full of distilled water and you just take a very tiny sample, very tiny, of a baby's pool and you throw it into that distilled water. Is that water pure? Is somebody with me? Is that water pure? It's just small. It's tiny. But that water is impure. That water already has a spot on it. And Jesus is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. That's very important. The Bible makes us understand that some have even lost their garments completely. Their garments are lost. Revelation 16, 15. Revelation 16, 15. He said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment. Lest he does what? Lest he walks naked. And they see his shame. You will not be put to shame. Amen. I said you will not be put to shame. Amen. I said you will not be put to shame. Amen. You must stand if you will be counted worthy. Ephesians chapter 3. As we round up, I mean, Ephesians chapter 6, rather, verse 13 to 18, as we round up. Ephesians 6, 13 to 18. He said, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. He says, Stand therefore, having your loins get with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shut with the prevention of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith. Where would you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now look at verse 18. That's why I'm going to round up. He said, praying always. Doing what? Praying how often? Always. always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's my call unto you today. Have you made up your mind that you will be counted worthy? Have you made up your mind that if God should come to you today, he will say thou art worthy, or rather than say thou art not worthy? I want us to, to bow down our heads. Let's bow down our heads. Let's bow down our heads. You know it. There's a song we sing in the original language that says, whatever will hinder me from the path of salvation, Trinity, take it away from me. Make that song a prayer point tonight. I mean, this morning. What is that thing that will debar you from this part of salvation? What is that thing that will prevent you from making heaven? What is that thing that will make God to look at you and say you are not worthy? Oh, tell the Lord to take it away from you. That's why you are here today. That's, there's glory ahead. And that glory is for you. It's not for someone else. Is God's determinate plan and counsel concerning you? The Bible says, examine yourselves and see that you are in the faith. Examine yourself this morning. Talk to God or this afternoon. Talk to him. He's here for you. He's here to meet with you. He's here to attend unto you. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's you and him. It's you and him. It's you and him. Are you worthy? You know that which will not make you worthy. You can start afresh today. You can start afresh today. You can sing that song that says, Jesus, Jesus, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Talk to him today. Talk to him. Maybe you are here, you are not born again, you have not given your life to Christ. This is another opportunity for you. Or you are watching us online, you are not born again. Oh, you want to raise up your hand where you are, we are going to pray together. You know you have not given your life to Jesus. You know if he comes today, you are not going with him. Are you ready? Do you want to say, today I start this journey with you, Lord? You want to raise up your hand? We are going to pray together. You are raising that hand to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Or you are watching online and you are saying, I want to run this race the way it ought to, to be run. If you are in that situation, just say with me, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I yield my life unto you. I give my life to you. Come in today.
coming to stay. Write my name in the book of life. I want to run this race seriously. I don't want to depart from you after today. Oh, Father, minister unto me and minister to me. Let me know we found one thing. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We love you, Lord. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you continue to do. Whatever will make us to be counted unworthy, your word says, every tree my father has not planted shall be rooted out. Father, root such out of our lives in the name of Jesus. Every desire that is taking us astray, Father, you will set us free from such in the name of Jesus. Every form of lust, fornication, pornography, defilement, homosexuality, Ah, Baba, that is leading your children on that part of damnation. Amen. Let there be a clean separation right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every heart that is crying unto you and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Amen. Father, you will have mercy upon us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. We love you, Lord, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. That joy